What's up? Welcome in as we move in to week four, the Bears and Broncos, both teams desperately trying to get their first win of the season. Johns, you got to be excited for this game, huh? <laughs> it's a battle of who's worst in the NFL. Yes. Adam Hogue, statistically speaking, the Denver Broncos have a worse defense than the Bears. So if you let up a 70-point whopper, that's what you get. Yeah, I guess pick your statistic. They're neck and neck. It's not good. Who is going to be able to get the stops in this game? Which offense do you trust more against a bad defense? A lot of, lot of things here for us to break down. Uh, welcome in. Follow us on Twitter at Adam Hogue. At Adam Johns, you can follow our show account. We have a lot of fun there. At Adam Hogue. Uh, excuse me, at Hogan Johns on Twitter is that account. Go check it out. Uh, we also have all of our merch, including that Polo Johns is wearing at HoganJohns.com. It sort of distracts me on the screen here. Like our show logo shows up right where the logo is on your polo. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it I really good. like the white one, the white polo. Yeah. Well, they're both great, but yeah, I like the white one. This too. is more uh, loose fitting. The the white version is a little bit more heavier, but it's more, I don't know, form-fitting. <laughs> oh. Does that make sense? I guess. I actually thought that they were the same material. They're not. Oh, okay. Well, regardless, they're both awesome dry-fit polos. Check them out while you still can. HoganJohns.com. All right. Let's jump into this. Um, a, little, a couple news items before we jump into a Broncos preview. But we did find out yesterday what we expected. Matt Eberflus says he will call the defense for the rest of the season. Um, there still wasn't. I didn't sense any clarity on is anybody going to our titles going to change at all? How are responsibilities going to be divvied up? It's one thing to just call the defense, but there's things behind the scenes, the game planning wise, that you can't just do everything and coach the offense at the same time. So. I still think there's more to dig into there in terms of who's doing what. Yeah, probably. My first reaction to it was he wants to go out on his own terms. Like, If he has any sense that this is going off the rails, because sometimes inside the building perception is a lot different than outside building perception. But if he senses where this is headed, like I would want to go out on my own terms if I'm Eddie with Lewis. Like, I'm calling the defense. I'm not letting anyone else call the defense. I want to call it the way I want to if this is the way it's going to be. And you know what? To be honest, I respect that. Yes. I'm cool with that. Um, I hope it's better than what they showed against the Chiefs where they just were like, you know what? Let's just let Travis Kelsey waltz through our zone and just stop wherever there's space and then the quarterback's <laughs> going to throw him the ball. Like I hope it's better than that, but... Did um, you see the video of that from the Chiefs? No, the Chiefs put touchdown? out a video on that too? So... Basically, okay. that is just the chemistry of Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes, where Travis Kelsey completely improvised his route, where he saw what the Bears were in coverage-wise and said, no, I'm not running to the corner. I'm going to run yeah. to the back of the end zone. And Patrick Mahomes is going to know where I'm going to be. And that's what happened. Yeah. Good. Honestly, that's how football should work. Run to the open space and have the chemistry with the quarterback to throw you the ball. Uh <laughs> Good for the Chiefs. That's a nice combination they have, and the Bears could not stop it. Uh, but we're on to week four and a combination of Russell Wilson, who's playing better. There's no Travis Kelsey on this team. There's still some talent, though. There's still some speedsters that you have to cover and figure out. And this is not good with the Bears secondary being banged up. Jalen Johnson not practicing. Eddie, uh, Eddie Jackson not practicing. Josh Blackwell not practicing. They're signing a press man corner from the Vikings practice squad uh, to come play this scheme and short. No, I mean, I'm sure that's for depth purposes. Regardless, Johns, uh, this is not great when the, the strength of this defense was supposed to be the secondary and this secondary already down. Kyler Gordon too is really banged up. So they signed Joe Juan Williams, right? Yeah. A former second round pick bust of the uh, Patriots. I yes. believe in 2019. So there you go. That's my analysis of that move. Well, yeah, and I, I wouldn't be too concerned about the player they signed. And just it's just an indication that uh, there's, def 
Yeah, there's definitely some concern that uh, Jalen Johnson won't be able to go this week. Uh, did not practice yesterday, but we'll continue to monitor that in the next couple of days. If there's any good news whatsoever, this Broncos defense gave up 70 points. 70 points. Now, I would like to point out, though, and I'm not trying to be a jerk. If the Chiefs wanted to put up 70 on the Bears Sunday, they could have. They could have. Probably. They pulled their starters. Nagy probably wanted to. Yeah. Now, on the flip side, the Dolphins also pulled, the Dolphins pulled up the, out their starters, too, in that game, at least a little bit later. But it was in the fourth quarter, and they kept scoring. So there's that side of it, too. The, the bottom line is neither defense in this game is very good. But if you're Justin Fields and this offense, you got to feel better this week. Then with all the noise going on last week, you knew you were going into Kansas City to play the Chiefs. It couldn't have been worse timing. In this case, this is the opponent. If there's ever time to face an NFL team that gave up 70 points, which never happens, essentially, this is a great week for this yeah. to happen. So this, this is my column today on The Athletic. You can check it out. Like This is a game where you need Justin Fields to have good numbers. And if he doesn't, then... Like everything is on the table for the Bears, like this season and probably maybe around the corner. Like if he can't produce against the Broncos, then these problems are might be unfixable in a short time frame here, which is the rest of the season. That's just the way it is. Like the Broncos defense is awful. Like I have this in my column. Like at the very least, with Mr. Trubisky, you could count on him to look very good against bad teams. Great record against the Detroit Lions, great numbers against the Lions. Justin Fields doesn't have that going for him in his career right now. Can I just give you some numbers about how bad the Broncos' defense is, and I'll give you the Bears' defensive numbers too? No. Pass. Sorry, Mike Glennon. Here we go. Pass yards per game. The Broncos, 280.7. The Bears, 285.7. Rush yards per game allowed. The Broncos, get this, 177.7. I think the... Uh, the Dolphins skewed that number because they run off for what, like 250 or 350, I think it was. Just a ridiculous amount. Yeah. Well, they had 700 and something yards in the entire game. Yeah. The, the, the do Dolphins. the Bears have that all season yet? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, they ran all over them. The Bears are allowing 121.7. Opposing quarterback rating the Broncos defense, 133.6. The Bears, 110.9. Sacks this season. Broncos defense has four. The Bears have one. QB hits. The Broncos defense has 12. The Bears have nine over three games. Third down conversion percentage. The Broncos defense, 43.3%. The Bears, 60%. Brutal. Points allowed per game this season. Broncos, 40.7. Bears, 35.3%. Pick your worst defense there, Adam Hogue. Well, I think we'll let them battle it out on the field on Sunday. <laughs> you know, if this is not a high-scoring affair, then, like, what the hell? But to your <laughs> point, like, yeah, it's great that they're playing the Broncos this week to get right. If they don't get right, that's what you're talking about. Like, oh, no. Then yeah. this is uh, this is everything is on the table. for the quarterback. Yeah, should be on the table. That's uh, that's a scary thought. All right. Uh, well, Nick Cosmiter covers the Denver Broncos for the Athletic. Um, we've had a couple scheduling complications uh, just in our lives the last couple of days. So because of that, uh, John's found some time with Nick uh, to talk to him and get the preview from the Broncos. So uh, this was pre-recorded, and it's all John's talking to Nick, but a great conversation, good way to get ready for the Denver Broncos this week. All right, let's bring in Nick Cosmiter. He's our Broncos writer for The Athletic, and you can check out his podcast. I love this name. Not another bucking podcast. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, what's going on, man? I'm um, doing good. I appreciate you having me, you know, ready to uh, ready to start getting ready for um, what is obviously the marquee matchup of uh, Sunday <laughs> afternoon. Uh, the the matchup of who could be the worst team in the league. Um, the crazy thing about this is that the Broncos, the team you cover, gave up 70 points and yet somehow are a two and a half point favorite coming into Soldier Field. So 
Uh, I think that says it all. You know, podcast over. Bears, you know, are officially the worst team in football, according to the odds makers. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it's just a real, I, I think, a surprise for the Broncos that they're in this spot. Um, you know, it's it's not as if there was, I, I think, a belief that Peyton, Sean Payton was going to come in and turn them into a, you know, division title contender in year one or anything like that. Um, but but being 0-3 and being 0-3 with a just historically bad flop um, as part of the ledger, um, I don't think anybody saw that coming. Um, it's been a, a really significant and swift fall for this defense, which for the last several years has been one of the league's better units. Um, and, uh, you know, it all came to head on a, on a steamy day in Miami, which was something that I, um, yeah, I don't think I'll ever see a game like that again. Well, there's still 14 games left. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I said things like that last year with Russell yeah. Wilson. Like, it's always like, I'm, I'm sure you experienced some of the, some of this too, of like, this has to be rock bottom, but there's been so many false bottoms, um, for this team over the course of the last, you know, five years. I think, I, I think I looked up the stat. In 2021, the, the Broncos were, uh, it was December 12th. I think it was week 13 or uh, yeah, it was after week 14. The Broncos were seven and six. They were sort of right in the mix for a wild card spot. They had Cincinnati coming in, who was also fighting for a wild card spot. Um, <clears throat> and um, since that time, the Broncos are five and 19 and that's tied with the bears for the worst record. In the NFL. <laughs> yeah. You always say there, there's rock bottom, uh, like the Bears lost to the Chiefs. I put this in a column the other day. That's not rock bottom. If there's one thing I've learned about covering this team for 12 plus seasons now, is it, it can always get worse. You're not to the finger pointing, you know, team turmoil stage quite yet for, for this group, although we've had quite the week uh, yeah. last week uh, for the <laughs> Bears. Um, quickly, be sure you're following. Nick on X, Twitter, whatever you call it, at Nick Cosminder. That's K O S M I D E R. Can you uh, take us through, like, how does a team score 70 points in a game? Like, what was that like to cover? Well, you know, they, they scored, the Dolphins did, um, on the third play of the game. And they did so in a way that we thought was going to be a pressure point for Miami's, or for, I'm sorry, for Denver's defense. They didn't have Justin Simmons. They're all pro safety. And when you're playing the Dolphins and you have to play this, you know, this coverage over the top, you you have to have just really excellent play from your safeties. Um, and instead of Justin Simmons, they're playing a guy in Delarin Turner Yell, who was who was essentially playing defensive snaps for just the second game in his career. And on the very third, you know, on the third play, um, you know, Pat Sertan is, is in coverage, is in single coverage across the middle of the field on a crosser Turner yell for whatever reason drops down to, to help Sertan cover Robbie chosen and, and leaves Tyree kill to just, you know, dart to a, a wide open spot, 40 yards down the field. He catches it and obviously is a player that, that frequently does the rest after the catch. Um, so you, it was, it felt sort of ominous, right? Like just how quickly and how easily, um, it came from Miami's defense, how quickly the, the bad mistake came for Denver's defense. And you said, this could be a long day, but to say you ever think a team is going to score 70, you know, I put at halftime, it was 35 to 13. And I wrote, uh, I, I wrote, uh, essentially keep an eye on this, this franchise record in scoring for Miami. It was 55 points. But even then I'm thinking like, yeah, you know, these teams have huge first halves. The game will sort of like even out a little bit, you know, they'll, they'll slow down some, and then they go out and score 35 more uh, in the second half. You give up 70 points when you can't stop anything. The Broncos gave up 350 rushing yards. They gave up 376 passing yards. Um, they, they allowed four, two different players to score four touchdowns each. I mean, it was really like a sonnet of symmetry in terms of how they allowed this to happen. Um, but yeah, 70 points, man. I, it's, I don't know. I, I'm still, there's, there, I, I go back and, and watch some of the, you know, the, the tape. Um, and I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about that touchdown. Like that's, that's how often they scored. We keep talking about how bad the bears defense is like right now, because it's not good. It's injuries and in all three levels and whatnot. And yet like, oh yeah, but the Broncos are still worse. <laughs> like A game like this will do that. What was like from like a reporter's perspective? 
Like walking into that locker room had to be something, man. Like what was that like? It was, and I, that's why I was really curious. You know, we um, at Hard Rock Stadium, the the press conference room for the the visiting team is right next to the locker room, and, and the walls are not particularly thick. So you're standing in there and you're waiting. And, and then you start to, you start to kind of feel this rattling that was Sean Payton on the other side, um, you know, really ripping into his team and, and um, you know, in, in no uncertain terms saying that, you know, this, this, you know, this can't ever happen again type of stuff, which you always know what a coach says in the locker room because it gets repeated uh, in one way or another by a lot of the players. Um, but what I was, what I was sort of, um, not surprised to find, cause you don't know what the reaction is going to be, but you walk in there and it's just a, just a ton of long faces. Like I, I look over to this one side of the locker room and there's, you know, the outside linebackers, it was Jonathan Cooper and Nick Benito and Randy Gregory. And just like, just the, the, just the dead stares ahead. That was, that was what defined it. And to me, it was more like a lot of times you have some of these losses, like the Broncos already have this year and you can feel kind of the frustration, you know, guys are, you know, they're, they're mad. They're, they're, they're going over the mistakes that they made or whatever the case might be. Um, but this was just shock. Like it was just, it was guys just like kind of unable to wrap their heads around what had just happened. Um, that was the prevailing sentiment. So it, it was different than I had seen in a lot of locker rooms before. How do you think Peyton's handling it this week? I mean, in Chicago, we're talking about, you know, coaching philosophies and, and the buy in the Matt Eberflus already. I know Sean Payton, this is only three games old, but like, how is he handling it? Like, is the locker room, you think it's going to respond to to that tirade? Is it, is it going to respond to to who he is and what he does? Yeah. You know, I, I think it, it, some of this last year was, it was similar with, with when Russell Wilson came in and, um, you know, got, guys are talking about, you know, all the success that he had had in Seattle. Like it, it's easy to follow somebody who is, who has been a nine time pro bowler who won there consistently made the playoffs eight times in 10 years um, to follow somebody like that, who just knows sort of what it takes. Um, but then it gets to a point and got to a point pretty early on last year where you're saying like, none of that really matters. None of it is germane to what we're going through now. And so I think there's some of that with Sean Payton, right? When he came in, there was a lot of like relief from players like, gosh, we got a guy that knows how to do this. He's been doing it for, for, you know, a decade and a half as a head coach, won a Super Bowl, all those sorts of things. Um, but now I, I do think it's some of this, like, okay, like we're, you know, we're, we're, we're more or less kind of doing, doing what it is that, that you're putting in front of us. Um, and, 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 the results haven't, haven't been there yet. So I, I, it's been a lot of him trying to tell them and understand that there's a, that there's a process to what they're going through right now. Um, but you know, it was interesting. He said that he considered not showing them the tape from the Miami game, which, which is, was, would be very antith, uh, antithetical to how Sean Payton approaches things with, you know, just insane detail and, and, and accountability at every turn. It was, it was so bad that he considered, Hey, maybe we just move past this and just like, throw it away um, before ultimately deciding that, Hey, no, we gotta, we gotta sit here and, and take our medicine. But yeah, it's been, it's, it's certainly, I think been um, eye opening. This ownership group went through this last December. They, they lost this game on Christmas day. You might remember 51 to 14 to the Rams it was an embarrassing day. And they, they sort of vowed like they didn't want to go through anything like that ever again. And it was part of why they went out and, and hired Sean Payton. So to have it already happen in the third game of the season where you become something of a national punchline, um, yeah, I think there's some, some real disappointment in that building right now that this has taken place. If you had to like rank the issues, like, is it lack of talent? Is it the coaching? Is it the quarterback play? Like, how would you rank losing that bad, I guess, in consecutive years? Like where, what's the number one issue for you? Yeah, p power rankings of, of things that are going wrong are always fun. That's how you know you're you're. Uh, you're <laughs> hey, sure hey you this is a great podcast for it. I got my own here if you want them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they. Um, yeah, I would say it starts with the talent on this roster. Um, you know, when they traded uh, for Russell Wilson in March of 2022, they gave up <clears throat> five draft picks, including two first rounders, two second rounders, uh, and a fifth rounder. They got a fourth rounder back. Uh, with the Russell Wilson trade, um, which they used on Yume Uwazarike, who's now been suspended from the NFL by gambling. So 
um, it was a it was a situation in which you had to give up a ton of capital, and they did so believing that you know they kind of were sort of close with the roster outside of quarterback, and that if they if they had a quarterback that was good enough to like lift what they believed was a pretty talented roster, then they could sort of keep keep building it behind him. But the problem was they had no draft capital after they made that trade. The Broncos have not had a pick in the top 60 since they took uh, Pat Sertan in 2021 at number nine overall. Um, so they they have just not had the ammunition to go out and add to this roster. They're they're an older team, and some of these some of these big veteran contracts that they've handed out over the last couple off seasons have not resulted in the production they were hoping for. Randy Gregory is a perfect example. He uh, only played in six games his first year after signing a five-year, $70 million contract. Um, he he had six sacks. Uh, I'm sorry, he played in six games. He had two sacks. This year he has one sack in three games. Um, so they've not gotten the production from him that they had envisioned. Um, same thing with, with guys like Zach Allen to this point, still early. He, he's only three games into his tenure, but – um, have not seen it from him to this point. Um, and you can kind of go down the list of guys that they've handed out some big contracts to who haven't met it. And that's, you know, when you dance in free agency and, and that's where you try to build your, build your team, you run into that all the time because guys who are really good are getting re-signed by their teams. They're not dipping into free agency. So um, that that's, I think that's a big issue. The talent ha has, has been a, a big issue. And then defensively, I, I think, you know, it seemed like a rushed marriage between Sean Payton and Vance Joseph, who again was the coach here, got fired in 2018, has now come back four years later. And, and for whatever reason, just does not seem to be um, fitting with the personnel here uh, that there's been just numerous breakdowns, you know, that they gave up 70 to Miami, but they gave up 35 the week before to a Washington team that then went out and scored three points against the bill. So that, that's at the top. Surprisingly, Russell Wilson at this point this year is actually somewhat low down that list of things that have gone wrong. Um, even though he has not been not been perfect, he's played at about a league average level. Um, but but that just I think goes to show just how many issues there have been. Yeah, but if you make a trade like this, and we know this story in Chicago, whether it's Jay Cutler trading up for Trubisky, if you make a trade like this for a quarterback, like it's got to work out. You may feel like you're close, but. It's got to work out because of what the, the draft capital, what the compensation is. And like one of the funny storylines for this one is that the Bears were one of the teams that had interest in trading for Russell Wilson two years ago. Pete Carroll didn't want to do it, ended up going to the Broncos. But like, what did the Bears, I guess, avoid? We got our, the Bears have their own like quarterback problems here. Like that, that's what we're covering here. We got yeah. some stuff to cover here again. Like, Justin Fields has not been good, but what have the Bears avoided with Russell Wilson? Like, is this marriage with Sean Payton going to work? Yeah, you know, what's so interesting about it, it's kind of what I'm like writing for for tomorrow is the Broncos, a lot of fans wanted them in 2021 to select Justin Fields, right? They had the number nine pick. He 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 was on the board, and there was actually a time we were in the we're in the Broncos sort of draft area where they set up for media inside their team field house. And right before the Broncos pick, you hear this just like uproar coming from another part of the room where they had sort of the um, it was the team radio station was was sort of set up there. And, and one of their one of their guys there, um, I think it was Al Williams, a former Broncos defensive player, is a big radio analyst in Denver, just sort of like explodes like, yes, yes, because for whatever reason, they had gotten, you know, misinformation that the Broncos were using that pick on Justin Fields and, and just went, went nuts. And then of course they didn't, they had, they had selected Pat Sertan instead, but um, you know, so that, that was, there, there was a prolonged sort of disappointment there because fans, fans felt like they wanted, wanted Justin Fields. They hadn't taken that young quarterback route since Peyton Manning retired. They find they had a top 10 pick, believed that this was the time to do it. Um, and so, you know, the, you could turn it now and you could potentially say that the Broncos maybe avoided something there by deciding to, you know, play the stop gap in 2021 with Teddy Bridgewater and then go out and make your big, big move for a quarterback. Of course, a lot of fans thought that was going to be Aaron Rodgers. That, that was sort of the big, the big thing, right? They hire Nathaniel Hackett, you know, his buddy, his OC in green Bay think that, that Aaron Rodgers is going to ask for that trade going into 2022 and it doesn't materialize and they sort of pivot. And, and go after Russell Wilson. I think what they've avoided uh, Chicago is just, you know, part of this is, is a, is a play is a, is a player who depends a lot on his mobility 
becoming 34 years old. I, I think there's there's a lot of consternation about a lot of different things in Denver, but I think that's been a huge part of it. You know, he still has he still has a big arm, but what he's lacking is the things that have been able to help him make up for his shortcomings, right? Like his his inability to sort of you know see past the line of scrimmage depending on where he's throwing the ball. He gets a ton of passes batted down. Well, earlier in his career, he's easily able to navigate that, get to his spots to where he can work around that. He's not able to avoid the rush in that same in that same way. Um, not able to make the dynamic second you know second act uh, action plays like he was in it during his career in Seattle. And and I think what came with last year too was just this this sense of um, a lack of uh, confidence. Like once it once it was starting to not look like it always had for him, um, there I think was a big mental hurdle he had to overcome. I think. I think he's done it a, a little bit this year. He's certainly been better with Sean Payton calling plays for him and designing the offense for him. Um, and and we'll see kind of where that ultimately goes. Uh, he's on pace to be a guy that throws, you know, 32, 34 touchdown passes and, um, you know, maybe 10 interceptions. Like he's going to have a good statistical season. But now where they're at is that next year he'll be 35 and that's when the contract just starts to kick in. So what, what, you've, what you've avoided is like, you know, this, this, fear of like having to to move on because you need to start rebuilding the team and yet having his contract is this like significant anchor to the franchise i mean if they were to cut him next year it would be an 85 million dollar dead cap hit they they could of course june won that and, and do it over two years um but but it's going to be a significant strain on their cap either way and then that says nothing of the fact that you're going to then have to find an answer without a whole lot of resources with which to find one how do you see sunday playing out besides this having a basketball like score <laughs> at, the, at the end of it <laughs> who's your pick man um gosh it is it, it is hard for me to pick the broncos in any football game right now just because um you know of of, of what i've seen from from their defense over the last couple of weeks but i just think there's enough there's enough veteran guys on that side of the ball who who can figure out a way to sort of rebound from from some of this uh, it's it's not going to be it's not going to be pretty but i i do think the broncos um because their offense i think has been proficient enough um and and chicago's not c capable i think of taking advantage of denver's defensive efficiencies in the same way obviously that a team like miami is or even the commanders are um i i, I think that that Russell Wilson and the offense will do just enough on Sunday to, to eke a win. There you have it. That's why they're the favorite <laughs> two and a half point favorite after giving up uh what'd you call it on Twitter? A 70 point burger, 70 burger, baby. Wow. Wow. Well, the bears record is intact. The 73 it, points. And here's the way that I, that I put it like to just, um, you know, to sort of um, put it in perspective, right? Like if you play fantasy football and you know, you woke up and you saw your kicker got 10 points, you'd be pretty excited. Like great day for my kicker to contribute to the team. Um, he had Jason Sanders, Dolphins kicker had 10 points and he never uh, attempted a field goal. In the <laughs> so, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, one of my sons has just two of my sons have Justin Fields on their team. I think he only got 10 points, uh, yeah. last week. So there you have it. There you go. There, there you have it. Uh, Nick, thank you so much. Um, if you're listening, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to check out his stuff on the athletic. He is our Broncos writer. Check out his podcast. Not another bucking podcast. Love that. Thanks, Nick. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate it. All right, Adam, let's get into the three big questions. Again, thank you to Nick. Great stuff. Great stuff. I love the name of his podcast. All right, Adam. Three big questions. Number one, one start. It's a must win. Who are you taking, Russell Wilson or Justin Fields? Yeah, I'm taking Russell Wilson, the guy that has a Super Bowl ring over the quarterback What's his record now? Five and 20 something, whatever it is. Five and not good. Like, I know that that's and I know everyone's going to be. It's not all Justin. It's definitely not all Justin. I get it. But can it be some of Justin, though? <laughs> yes, it is some of Justin. Yes, I hate how it has to always be blind. It's all Justin. It's not all Justin. Like, it, it's it's everything. OK, yeah. it's everything. And at the end of the day, um. Good quarterbacks find a way to make things around them that, that are not so great work. Okay? Not every Sunday, but most Sundays. Russell Wilson had a bad year last year. He's actually looked pretty good so far this season. Um, 
eh, pretty good. I mean, you know, not great, but pretty good. And right now, between the two, I have to take Russell Wilson. Yeah, the numbers are still, well, they're better than, than Fields. 65% of his passes have been completed, 791 yards passing, six touchdowns, two interceptions, a passer rating of 99.5. He's averaging 263.7 passing yards per game. A lot better than Justin Fields. John, if the question was who do you who do you add to who would you rather add to your team right now? I'd probably still go Justin because he's on a rookie contract and a hell of a lot cheaper. But the question was who are you picking to win a game this week? I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with Russell Wilson. Gotcha. Number two. If you're Matt Eberflus, which defensive player are you challenging the most this week? Ooh. On the Bears, you mean? On the Bears. Okay, not which Bronco are you targeting? Which no. Bears player are you on, saying? On your own defense. Like, who are you bringing into your offense? Your offense, your offense, your office. Putting up the tape and telling you, that's not good enough. We need you to be significantly better. Um, can it be more than one? I would can I you, Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, Can I just take every one of my defensive ends and put them in a room and say, dude, you got to look, look this, at the end of the day, this is the scheme. We need to get home with four. You guys got to find a way to do it. Um, now that's a little dangerous because he can definitely help them out and take more ownership and be like, you know, we'll help you with blitzes here and there. We'll come up with some twists, stunts, whatever we possibly can. But and the only reason I'm not singling out like Yannick and Gakwe, but that would be one, right? Yo, you get in the backfield this time, you got to take the quarterback down. It can't be like, oh, I missed again. So that would be one. But they got to work together. Like, that's how pass rushes work. You have to work together. It's just got to be better. Like I, I feel like that's an interesting conversation because he's here on like a one-year deal, right? Like, he's got the mercenary contract. Yeah. He's here to sack the quarterback, and like he's not a core player, at least one that you project for your your future here, right? Like I, I'd almost go Tremaine Edmonds, and I know Maddie Ruffalo's kind of backed up Edmonds yesterday at, at his press conference, but like, hey man, like we we put you, we signed you to be like our Brian Urlacher in the middle of this defense, and I know the defensive front isn't great, but we need you to make plays. We need you to rally everybody. We need you to be inspirational for them. Please make a play for us. Like, I yeah. would start there, right in the middle of your defense with Jermaine Evans. Number three, if you're Kevin Warren, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, how concerned are you right now about the jobs that Matt Eberflus and Ryan Poles are doing? Is it okay to say 10? It is. I mean... I, I, I just, I don't, I don't, what, what do you point to right now? That's good. Again, I'm not, I'm not trying to be Mr. Negative, you know, it's, but it's hard not to be. What, what, what are you, if you're Kevin Warren, what are you looking at that, that you feel good about? Nothing. I mean, I mean, I'm <laughs> being serious. Like it you, goes you, back to our conversation the other day. Where are the positives? I you, can't even if you, one. Yeah. Even if you want to be like last, all oh, the cultures, the culture's looking pretty good. The culture right now sucks. Your defensive coordinator mysteriously is gone, and you're dealing with all that. You, you've had turmoil. With, now the head coach is calling the defensive plays. Uh, at the body language on the sideline looks terrible during the games. Like I don't, I don't know. I'm sure inside that building, there's more, a couple more positives that they can look to. But. Yeah, I, I mean, that's at least a nine, maybe ten. How can yeah, it not we, be? Here's the thing about football. You need these positives to show up publicly. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's a, it's a publicly played sport where you need positives to, to show itself on the football field, to show itself in, in press conferences. Mm -hmm. What well, I mean, what's your answer to that question? I would say nine. Because yeah. I would tell myself, well, it's only three games into the season. There's 14 left. But my fear would be, if I'm Kevin Warren, is that this could get worse. My job might get tougher. 
Yeah, well, and that's the thing where maybe we're jaded a little bit, but we know it always can get worse. Yeah, we've seen it get worse, and I think that's what we're all sort of fearing right now. Over unders. It's from Dean on Twitter or on X. Over under on Butts is called by Matt Eberflus. Five and a half. Oh. Uh, I'm going to go over, but just at like six. Yeah, I think that's a good number at five and a half. I would say six, but the amount of blitzes that get home, I'm going to go way under. If I could twist that around a little bit. But yeah, I, th I think he's got to dial it up a little bit more. So I think that'll, that'll go over. From Scout BPA, I'm guessing that's best player available. It's kind of off the first one a little bit. Over under on sacks for the Bears. Defensive line. He knows his answer, but he set this at a half. I'm going over. They get one. I'm going to say over to uh, the reality is Russell Wilson's taking a lot of hits this season. It should be a game that you're able to create pressure, but unfortunately, we've seen that story before where it's like, oh, this is a week they should get some pressure, and then they just still don't. So The old shoulda, woulda, coulda. Yeah, but they should be able to get one, right? One? One sack? Please? You would hope. But like, nine quarterback hits over three games. Like, that is a problem that goes back to last year, too. There's no fear in some of these quarterbacks. They're not being touched. Right, the, the opposite. Red Roof. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. sorry, go ahead. No. Moving on, you want to... We could rip the defense a little bit more. Yeah. No, I'm good. <laughs> this is from Cole and Red Rusker. A couple of these on Twitter. Um, mentions of how close the Bears were to trading for Russell Wilson the twenty before the 2021 draft. Over under on a half. I get think you get maybe one by the broadcast. You know, it's it's a couple of years ago. They're in different towns, but maybe it comes up in passing. If uh, if they're doing their homework correctly, th th that should come up. Just one time. I'm not sure it will, because I feel like that's something that's probably forgotten nationally or out. You know, I think even here in Chicago, we don't talk about that enough, how much they wanted Russell Wilson and different how, regime. Yeah. But that was really Pete Carroll that nixed it Yeah, at the time. I mean, the, John Schneider, Ryan Pace were ready to go. And Pete Carroll said no, and then they waited one more year, and then they pulled the trigger on moving Russ. So, worked out good for Seattle. Yeah. Not so not so good for the Broncos, and uh, frankly, the Bears dodged a bullet because even if this doesn't work out with Justin Fields, they don't have that contract to deal yeah. with. Well, they don't have that contract, and they maintain... As Nick and I were talking about, they maintain that draft capital, mm. right? Like, if you make a move like that, you better be right, as we saw with Jay Cutler, right? Unless you're the 49ers, who can somehow trade three first-rounders <laughs> for a bad quarterback and yeah. still be the best team in the league. Uh, you have the best play caller in the business. and Special players in other places, yeah, it works. All right, this is from Lynn. Percentage chance of 0-3 teams to make the playoffs being mentioned at half. I think you get it. Uh, percentage chance of 0-3 teams. Which is like playoffs. that minimal uh, percentage. Oh, of, yeah. Yeah, you know, like the odds aren't good for the Broncos and Bears to make the playoffs at this point. Well, whatever the I, – I don't know what the percentage chance of 0-4 teams to make the playoffs, but that's how I would tee it up. Hey, the winner of this game can't lose because if you start 0-4 – I don't know. Has that ever happened? One team's ever done it. Is it one team? I don't know. I didn't look that up. Okay. It can't be many. 0 and 4 teams to make the playoffs? No, it can't be yeah. many at all. All right, last one is from Patrick. References of Taylor Swift at the Bears Chiefs game. Set it at two and a half. I'm I'm taking the under, but you do get a couple. Well, they'll show the highlight of Travis Kelsey catching a touchdown and then the Taylor Swift going nuts. So there be there will be one. How about JP's video of them walking together? Yeah. Broke the internet. Uh, 
So that kind of confused me because, like, I just assumed that wherever he was there, he got that. Like, there's cameras everywhere, but apparently there wasn't because that was the only video. So that spot, like, I was with him for a bit, Jared Payton. Like, I know exactly where he got that. Um, I guess I should have waited a little bit longer. Yeah, come on, talking about this the other night. Yeah. What are you doing? Well, Where are your priorities? Upstairs, hustling upstairs or at a column. <laughs> Between you and Kevin. Kevin was there too, right? Uh, he was, I think, in Justin Fields' press conference at that point. Oh, who needs to talk to the quarterback? Come on. Yeah, I would I would have pegged Kevin for the for getting the Taylor Swift. Swift. I think he is. No, a you guys are you guys are doing your jobs. I would have been doing the same thing, not worried about Taylor Swift. Um all right, that's it for over unders. We got to get to our our picks. Bold predictions. Did we get one of these right last week? Um, we got to start remembering our own bold predictions. No, this has been a staple for the show for nine years. Is after we make the bold predictions, we immediately forget them, and then when the game comes around, we wait said, for we wait for our listeners to tweet us if we're right. So two we're sacks, close. yeah, but someone tweeted us. I think one of us said two turnovers. Oh, yeah. We, we, I honestly don't remember if it was you or me, but <laughs> Kent says two sacks was wrong. Yeah, I think I had two sacks. The two turnovers would have been right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, we were factoring in that Blaine Gabbert would come to the game and throw one right to Jack Sanborn. Um, I'm going to say... Is this bold now? And Justin Fields, two hundred and twenty-five yards passing. Yeah. All right, then I'm going with it. Okay, I'm gonna flip that a little bit. I'm gonna say that the Bears, realizing how bad they need a win, finally commit to the running game. Let's pound the ball right up there. Knock on wood. If you're with me, man. All right. So a Bears running back, I'm not going to commit to one, although I would probably lean towards Roshan. Goes over 100 yards rushing in this game. Okay. Which doesn't happen a lot anymore. But if you yeah. see what the Dolphins could do on the ground against this defense, I would hope you look at the tape. They do that, right? I hope so. Run the ball. It's there for you. Yes. Which would also help your quarterback. Run the ball. Commit to it. Get out of there with a win. Just get a win. You need a win more than anything right now. Justin Fields needs a win, even if he only throws for 90 yards again. Well, that'd still be alarming. But yes, a win's a win. I, 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 if they don't commit to the run in this game, I just I don't even think I'm going to show up for the post game pod because I don't think I'm going to be able to hold it back. No, that's even better. Definitely show up for the post game <laughs> pod if that's the case. I, I'm going to lose my mind. Um, all right, and your pick for the game? I'm going thirty twenty four Broncos. I'm just not picking the Bears until they win again. I have more faith in Russell Wilson. To go back to that first big question, more faith in Russell Wilson to perform at a winning at a winning rate, whether it's completion percentage, pass rating, whatever, than Justin Fields in this game. Like if both defenses are bad, both defenses can't stop, I think it's Russell Wilson who takes advantage of that more than Justin Fields. Broncos thirty to twenty four. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I just don't trust this Bears offense enough right now, even against a bad defense. And if I have to pick, it goes back to that question you asked me in three big questions. Which quarterback are you picking to win one game? I got to go Russell Wilson. Uh, The spread is tricky that the Bears being three and a half point underdogs. I'm going to say the Broncos 24, Bears 20, right on the number, but the Broncos barely. It's not exactly the high scoring affair that we, you know, think could happen, but. Man, like that spread, the Bears started off as a two and a half point home dog, and now they're up to three and a half. Yeah, and it seemed to move pretty quickly, too. 
not great. Not, not good. Not great. Not good. Not, just bad. Just bad. Just got to win a game. My friends somehow. are, uh, I'm on like a, a coach text message with, you know, like guys in the neighborhood and you know, the guys that we coach with. And when they, when they ask for my bears thoughts, I'll, I'll just reply just bad. Now it's like a running joke. Cause I use it so much. Apparently they picked up on it. Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> well, maybe I got to switch it up a, a little bit, but I'm not in for expansive answers in the, the text chat, but yeah, it's just, well, just bad right now. When everyone in your life is asking you about the bears, there's only so much you could say. I think yeah. just bad sums it up perfectly. Right. Cause you can't, if you, if you really wanted to go into all the problems, you could, you know, spend 20 minutes talking to each individual in your entire life about it. Um, so just bad's a good way to go. Just bad. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Um, John's has to go. I do. And uh, we're kind of tag team in this episode a little bit to make sure it's uh, still, you know, the same length and analysis we try to give you for uh, all of our preview episodes. So John's is going to go. He's leaving me his pick. So I'm still going to uh, relay his picks here, but I'm going to go through the NFL games the rest of the way. John's, I'll see you at House Hall. See ya. All right. We will start with results from last week. Thanks to our guy, Nick Villarreal, who uh, always sends me the results every week because we never keep track of them. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, I went four and two last week. That includes the, the five NFL games we pick and the Bears game. Uh, John's went one in five. Not a great week for him. He was doing well before that. So uh, on the season, I am 11 and seven. That's 61 percent. Certainly take that. Certainly will not keep that up. You might want to fade me this week. John's is eight and 10 on the season. 44 percent. Um, our lock of the week so far. I've done two. I'm two and oh. John's is one and one so far this season. We don't always do them only if we feel really confident. Um, so there's that. All right. We start tonight. Uh, big Thursday game, fun Thursday game. The Lions are in Green Bay. I was kind of spending all week debating whether or not to try to go to this game. I've always just wanted to been to Lambeau many times in the press box, but have wanted to sit in the stands. I don't think I'm going to be able to pull it off, but uh, a fun one tonight at Lambeau. The Lions, Packers, the Packers are one and a half point home dogs. They uh, have some injuries that are going to come up to game time. I know Bakhtiari is already ruled out. Elton Jenkins has already been ruled out, so their offensive line is in trouble. And uh, Christian Watson and Aaron Jones, I believe, are going to be game-time decisions. They're both questionable, but they might get those guys back tonight. Uh, they held them out Sunday on the short week. I just think the Lions are a better team here. Uh, remember, they went in Lambeau last week, or the last week of last season and, and spoiled the Packers' playoff chances. I'm going to take the Lions. Johns is also taking the line. So we agree on this one. I think they're just a better team. Uh, short week, crazy things can happen. Uh, but the Packers really should have lost that game on Sunday against the Saints. They got away with it. And uh, I think just the Lions are better here. So we are both taking Detroit. We go to Sunday noon, CBS Dolphins at Bills. Good game here. Great game here. Why is this a noon game? This should be at least late afternoon or one of the primetime windows. This is great. The Dolphins are fun to watch. The Bills are two and a half point home favorites. Makes sense. They're at home. They're still really good. You got to be digging what the Dolphins are doing right now, though. And I haven't watched enough of their defense yet, but we know Vic Fangio is in charge there. I assume that that's going to start making them really hard to beat. Um Imagine a Vic Fangio coach defense with everything they're doing on offense right now. As far as as long as Tua Tungavailoa is healthy, I'm going with the Dolphins. I love everything they're doing, especially getting two and a half points here. I'm taking the Dolphins. Johns, however, is going with the Bills at home. So he's got Buffalo to cover two and a half. Noon Fox Vikings at Panthers in the NFC North. Picking this Vikings game, so we always cover all the NFC North teams for you. They go to Carolina, and the Panthers are not very good right now. 
Um, I honestly don't know right now. Is Bryce Young coming back? Is he back this week, or is this going to be another Andy Dalton game? The, the The weird thing is, um, looks like he's back at practice. So it looks like Bryce Young is going to come back this week on start to play against the Vikings. Okay. Not to be a jerk. That actually makes me want to pick the Vikings more. Um, I I would actually be worried uh, or feel better about the Panthers' chances if Andy Dalton was starting. Now, I will say this. The four is tough. The Vikings are always playing in close games. I think the Vikings are better than their own three record. I don't think they're great, but I think they're clearly the better team in this game. It's the NFL, though. Vikings play close games, so I'm going to take the Vikings to win, the Panthers to cover at home in this game. Might regret that. Panthers are struggling to score right now, but yeah. I don't know. It's the Adam Thielen revenge game, too. All right. Also noon, Fox Commanders at Eagles. Uh, the Eagles are an eight-point favorite, and now they're coming on a short week because they played Monday night. Washington, though, really got beat up last week. Divisional game kind of feels like the Eagles uh, could let this one come under the number, uh, but I just like how they're playing right now. I like their defense. I don't trust Sam Howell. This is a big number. Probably would be a stay away for me otherwise, but since it's here on the list, I'm going to take the Eagles. I just think that's a smarter thing to do even though they are giving up eight points here. So Eagles to cover. And then finally, our last game that we're picking, NBC Sunday night, 720. Chiefs at Jets, a game. Oh, as much as we hate to say it, it would be so much better with Aaron Rodgers. Thank you, Aaron Rodgers. The Chiefs at the Jets. Oh, man, this has been Patrick Mahomes versus Aaron Rodgers. Instead, it's Zach Wilson, who's really just... It's a tough situation there with the Jets of that offense. Nine and a half here. You saw what the Chiefs were able to do last week. Now, the Jets defense is still good. I have a feeling they will try to cover Travis Kelsey. Um, nine and a half is a big number. At home, at night, I think the Jets cover. I think they find a way to cover, um, but the Chiefs win the football game. So, yeah, got to go that route with the with the Jets covering Chiefs. How you, there's no way you're going to pick the Jets to, to win this game outright, though. So there you go. Your picks for week four. Uh, thanks for sticking with us throughout this pod. I know it's a little little different with uh, us having to split up duties here a little bit, but want to make sure we still got you a nice long episode and a good preview. Uh with uh, the Broncos writer, Nick Cosmiter. Thank you to Nick for joining the pod today as well. Thanks to our producer, Kent Garrison. Again, you can follow us on Twitter at Adam Hogue at Adam Johns and on our show account at Hogue and Johns. And of course, all of our merchandise at hogandjohns.com. Go check it out. The website's awesome. We thank obvious shirts for all of that and all their great merchandise. It all comes from them. They do a great job. Uh, And then also, you should be reading all of Johns' work on The Athletic, theathletic.com slash Hogan Johns. You can find me at allchgo.com. Newsletter coming out twice a week now during the season. That's for CHGO diehards. And, of course, we are on CHGO daily at noon. Uh, that continues throughout the week. And then, of course, pregame and postgame on Sundays. And then as soon as CHGO's postgame wraps up, we jump on here for Hogan Johns. We'll have you covered, too, Sunday after the game Broncos bears should be an interesting atmosphere. The one thing we didn't really talk about is a lot has changed in the last 18, 19 days since the bears were last at the, on the field at soldier field. There were some booze that day. Some players took exception that day. Uh, this is going to be an interesting atmosphere on Sunday because it could get toxic very quickly. I feel like so, um, I would uh, advise the Bears to get off to a decent start. That would probably be a good move. And if this is a game where they can lead from start to finish, uh, that would certainly make fans feel a lot better. Otherwise, um, things could get ugly out there. So if you're going to the game, have fun. Um, 
if you're looking for a tailgate before the game, CHGO, we have a tailgate uh, that you should check out. It's uh, just go to allchgo.com. You can find the uh, tickets there. And our friends from DNVR are coming in for this game with the Broncos. So um, if you're looking for something to do before the game, we will be there. Uh, allchgo.com. Find the tickets to the tailgate. And um, we'll be out there. I don't know. I haven't done the timing yet, but somewhere there in the morning before uh, before our pregame show starts at 11. Would love to see you. Would love to say hi. So you can do that. Of course, Johns will be at Soldier Field in the press box. But um, all right, that's going to do it for us today on our episode. We will see you right after the game. Bears, Broncos. Can they get a win? Talk to you Sunday.